And here's our last example of how to work out projectile motion problems. So, of course, we couldn't stop without doing this one here. Here's uh, Evil Knievel. I don't know how many of you remember him, but uh, he was one of those daredevils that used to jump his motorcycle over uh, all kinds of uh, cliffs and canyons and all kinds of things like that. So let's assume that he is at work again. He has to jump a canyon that's 20 meters wide, which is about uh, 67 feet or so. He's got a ramp at an angle of 15 degrees. The question is, how fast does he have to travel? And of course, we're looking for the initial velocity. How fast does he have to travel to make it over that canyon? So again, since he's taken off at an angle, we need to find the x and y components of that initial velocity. So we need to find the v initial in the x and the v initial in the y direction. So we know, of course, that v initial in the x direction is equal to v initial times the cosine of theta. Uh, v initial in the y direction is equal to v initial times the sine of theta. So in this case, uh, that would be equal to v initial times the cosine of 15 degrees, and that would be v initial times the sine of 15 degrees. And let's find out what those numbers are, because we're going to need them in our further calculations. So 15, take the cosine, that's a 0.966. So it's equal to 0 0.966 times the initial velocity, and at the sine, we get uh, 15 sine, that's 0 0.256, 0 0.256 times the initial velocity for the y direction. All right, so now we have our x and y components of our initial velocity, and by now, you should guess that the next step would be to find the time in the air. Assuming that the takeoff point and the landing point are at the same height, let's just use that as for simplicity. We can say that the time in the air can be found by using the equation y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time plus one half g t squared. That should be a very familiar equation by now. Initial and final height would be the same, so we can say zero equals zero plus initial velocity in the y direction. That would be 0 0.256 v initial uh, minus 4, oh, I can't forget the time, got to have a time in there, t minus 4.9 t squared. Now notice again here, we have the unknown v sub naught, which we're trying to find, and we have the unknown time, so we cannot solve for time with this equation alone. But we can do the same for the x direction, because time in the air for the y direction must be equal for time in the air for the x direction, so let's do that. So time in the air using the x direction equation. This was time in the air using the y direction. So we have x equals v initial in the x direction times time, or time is equal to x divided by v initial in the x direction. In this case, x is 20 meters, v initial in the x direction is 0 0.966 v. So time is equal to, so we have 20 divided by 0.966 equals, or 20.7, divided by v initial. I should call this v initial. All right, so now we have time in terms of v initial here. Here we have time and v initial in the same equation. We could then plug that in here and there. And if we do that, we only have one unknown left, v initial. All right, so we have 0 equals 0 0.256 v initial times 20.7 divided by v initial minus 4.9 times 20.7 divided by v initial quantity squared. Notice here the v initials cancel out. And simplifying this a little bit more, we get 0 is equal to 0.256 times 20.7. So we get uh, 5.3. Is that correct? Yep. So we have 5.3 uh, minus, so we have 20.7 squared times 4.9 equals, that would be minus 2100. So minus 2100 uh, divided by v initial squared. Okay, now you can see how this is simply solving for equation with v initial squared. So we're going to go ahead and move this over and turn the equation around. So we have minus 2100. Oh, well, let's see here. What's the best way of approaching it? Let's just move to minus 5.3. So minus 5.3 equals minus 2100 divided by, oops, I'm missing a one there. 2100 divided by v initial squared. Moving this over here and this down there and moving this way so I have more room. So I have v initial squared is equal to minus 2100 
divided by a minus 5.3. Notice, of course, then the negatives cancel out. So we have this divided by 5.3 equals. So we have V initial is equal to, and then, of course, taking the square root of both sides, the square root of 2100 divided by 5.3. Take the square root, and we get 19.9. .9. V initial equals 19.9. .9. Of course, the units are meters per second. All right, so if evil can evil takes off at a speed of about 20 meters per second or faster, he'll make it across the canyon. Anything less than that, that might spell problems. Of course, assuming there's some wind and friction and all that, I would go a little faster than that just to make sure I'd make it across that canyon. Of course, I wouldn't be that crazy to try that. All right, that's how you do that problem.